the world. You have created one human family to live in righteousness and peace. Give us wisdom to order our common life according to your loving purpose. We pray for your church. We have given us the gifts of the Messiah so that your church may be steadfast and true. Give us strength and follow your Son until all have come to repentance and are reconciled by his love. We pray for tragedy in high school in Michigan. Give your comfort and peace, the family of the victims and the community. We are devastated of the gun violence and the cruelty of the human being. Lord, have mercy on us. We pray for those who are sick, who suffer need, who are in danger. We lift up Abby's grandmother and Sam, please continue to recover from his surgery. And we lift up white friend from El Salvador, Elasmus Reyes, Lemus. You have made us for the holy purpose to comfort and care for each other. Give us compassion to love our neighbor and patience to care for those in need. Let your face shine upon the church and all this weary world, we pray. In the name of the Jesus Christ, amen. It's time for the lightening of the Advent candle. For many of us, the call to head home is one of joy and hope. We can't wait to reconnect with family, with history and tradition, with a wonderful time of freedom and loving support. We can't wait to go home. There are those who fear going home, however, and there are times when going home brings back memories that are not so good, not so healing. We are reminded of when we didn't fit in, when we didn't measure up, when we weren't loved like we needed to be loved. Home can be a difficult place for some. The prophet Malachi tells us that even when we are in the hottest of fires, there is a presence who can make us better, who can refine and purify. John the Baptist tells us that the road home is always under construction, mountains leveled, and valleys filled in to make smooth the path that leads us to our true destination, where we can live in peace and unity with all. We light these candles, the candle of hope and the candle of peace, as a sign of our assurance that though the road is hard, we believe it is worth the journey. It is time to go home. I invite you to sing the Advent song, verse 2. <clears throat>
because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all of our days. And you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the response.
standard at this time. Bless each one of us and open our hearts and ears so that we can take your words into our hearts. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Let me have a question. What do you say if I ask, what is prayer? I grew up in the Korean Methodist Church. During the service, the laypersons take their turn to prepare a prayer and pray during the service. But mostly they pray on extemporary prayer for the service without using a written prayer. Some of them pray with their own written prayer, and they pray for one minute to five minutes. When I was young, sometimes it was not easy for me if their prayers lasted longer than three minutes. While they are praying, I close my eyes. One day, I realized that I could pray as well in silence while they are praying. After learning this way of prayer, it was fine for me, even though a lay person prayed audibly for five minutes longer. <coughs> Through this experience, I learned prayer is to talk with God. Before I decided to come to the United States, I prayed with my mother for 100 days, early in the morning and late in the night. I had a job at the advertising company and I was really satisfied with the salary and the work. Quitting my job to learn English was not, not an easy decision. And leaving my family to travel to, to the U.S. to learn English was not an easy decision. I wanted to, to hear from God if the decision was good for me or not. I woke up at 5 a.m. and went to the early morning service at 6 a.m. and went to work right after service. It took one, one and a half hour to get to work by Sunday. I arrived back home from work around 5 p.m. I went to church at 9 p.m. for praying with my mother. Physically, I was really exhausted, but I was de desperate to have an answer from God. Gratefully, God answered my prayer uh, through the reading the Word of God. It was Genesis chapter 12 and verses 1 through 3. The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, in your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curse you I will curse and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Through this Bible verse, I received my conviction that my leaving to go to the U.S. was approved by God through the prayer. This kind of prayer is a petition to God. What does prayer mean for you? What would you say if I asked you to complete the statement Prayer is blank. Think about it.
Prayer is essential practice of Christian life. The Bible says that we should pray without ceasing. However, I believe that many of us still struggle to pray constantly. Why do we need to pray as Christians? It's difficult to live out the Christian life without prayer. Prayer draws us into an intimate relationship with God. Through prayer, we get to know God and ourselves more deeply. Intimacy with God and with our own self can be both exciting and frightening. Prayer makes us feel vulnerable. In our prayers of praise and confession, thanksgiving and petition, we come to know who God is and who we truly are. Prayer can make us see things in our hearts such as greed, violence, hatred, and prejudice, as well as joy, faith, hope, and love. The more we pray, the more we realize how sinful our hearts are and the limitations of our knowledge of God. God says to us to pray without ceasing, and also God already knows our need better than we do. If God already knows our need, why do we still need to bring our petition to God? The author of the book says, I mean, the, the older book, what we are doing in the sermon series during the Advent, the simple answer might be because God said so. And he added an answer. It's because Christ is our meditator, representing the whole of humanity, raising us up as his siblings. We can come to God as a sinner, but Christ is fully human and fully divine and stands in behalf of all of God's children and intercedes for us. Through prayer, we experience not our own accomplishment, but rather God's gifts of grace coming through the Holy Spirit, who frees and enables us to pray when we cannot find our own words for prayer, the Holy Spirit intercedes with a deep sigh for us. In our prayers, we not only speak, but also experience intercession for us by the three persons of the Trinity, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. There is a circular moment of love that comes from God and returns to God. Therefore, in our prayers, we can find the ultimate hope and trust in the triune God. Why do we need to pray to God? First, as I shared earlier, it's not easy to live out as a Christian without praying. We can learn how to pray through the church's prayers, such as the Lord's Prayer, Psalms, and Liturgy. These words help us to know who God is and who we are. And then secondly, prayer and sanctification. Prayer helps us to know who God is and who we are. Since we confess that Jesus is our Lord, God's sanctifying grace, Holy Spirit, helps us to live as a Christian life and express the image of God in us. And then thirdly, prayer and love of neighbor. When we pray to the Lord's prayer, we pray as we, as a community, so we pray the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven, not 
my father. We do this because we are all connected to one another in the spirit. We pray for an entire world because we care about others. As Jesus says that great commands are love your God and love your neighbor. When we experience God's love through prayer, we can love our neighbors through the love of God. Therefore, the divine love leads us to love our neighbor, and we can offer the intercessory prayer that expresses that love. And then finally, why do we pray? Because we love. We pray because we love. God loved us first, reaching out to us in the loving relationship. And in that response, we pray and seek God for God for communion with Him. We can boldly pray because Christ, as our mediator, came to the earth Himself. He understands our suffering, unbelief, and frustration. We can express our doubts, raise questions, or protest because we trust in God deeply and believe in God's goodness and faithfulness revealed to us in Christ's incarnation. We pray for others because we are loved by God and express and share that love with all our neighbors regardless of their different backgrounds. <clears throat> when you listen to what prayer is and why we need to pray, what would you say prayer is blank? I share my experiences about prayer, but I believe you have your own experience of what, of what prayer is. I believe that the practice of a prayer is more important than just knowing of a prayer. Therefore, I encourage you to practice praying during Advent with journaling. I suggested last week that you write down or think about three things you are thankful for that day. Please add to prayer after giving thanks to God for the day. And just close your eyes and thank God for the day He has given you. I pray that in the practice of prayer, you may experience God's divine nature, love, and grace in our life, and experience the journey of the perfect union with God.
classroom. Um, if you like them, you do a reading. It's all good. And um, Shepherd Stack Christmas donation, Christmas um, collecting new coats and stocking stuffers. December 12th, we're having a hymn sing along and potluck dinner here at five. So please come out with your uh, voices ready to sing. And Christmas Eve, we're having an 11 o'clock at Stone Chapel. Uh, will be a candlelight service and 6.30 at Zion. So you can either do early at Zion or late here. Good to have options. Other announcements? Oh, I just want to say again, thank you for those of you who helped last night. I think we've had almost 80 people here um, for the Bluegrass concert. Sold lots of stuff. And uh, we still have a lot of chicken salad sandwiches and goodies left over. So please hang out after church and have a sandwich. Yeah? Yes? On the shepherd's day, I was talking to a lady last night and taking him over this week because they'd like to have him as soon as possible. Great. Okay. These preachers don't love him here for the rest of the day. Wonderful. Uh, yes, that's why, that's, why these, the, that's why these are up here is so that we can bless the donations to, to shepherd's. Lord. 
of your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It's right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You have formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You deliver us from captivity. Make covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the prophet. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Obey in the hearts. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Obey not in the hearts. Holy are you. And blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, your Spirit anointed him to preach the news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who were oppressed, and to announce that the time has come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us, made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of new covenant, for all, for you and for many, forgiveness of sins. Do this, as often as you drink this, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of this, your mind act in Jesus Christ. We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. For all your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on this give some bread and wine. Make deadly for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we be at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, our honor and glory is yours, the mighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
body of Christ broken for all of us. Blood of Christ shed for all of us. This is the Lord's table, you all invited. Now you have a packet on this, please open it. And then open the first lid, plastic lid, and hold in wafer in your hand. Then open the second plastic lid and then hold it in your hand. Please repeat after me. Blood of Christ given for me.
shall receive the benediction. Prayer is the central practice of Christian life. Through prayer, we get to know God and ourselves more deeply. Let's practice some prayer during Advent so that we may experience God's love and grace in our lives and experience the journey of a perfect union with God. Go into the world with the power of God's love and grace. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.